I want to just to begin acknowledging that this is a part of uh, an effort that we do within the Global Carbon Project, which is one of these projects of the Earth System Science Partnership. And I want to uh, particularly acknowledge uh, all the people who actually have contributed and institutions who uh, make possible this update. And that will be uh, C.S. Conway, uh, Phil Care, Hutton, um, Marlin, and Rapac, uh, all in various institutions, all responsible for parts of the data sets or modeling that I'll be presenting and that we need to uh, bring together the carbon budget. So let me just uh, say what, what I'm going to be doing today. Uh, I'll just update you on the various components of the new budget, and then I'll talk about some of the drivers behind those, uh, uh, those changes in the budget. And that, that's important to us because uh, it, it kind of tells us a little about uh, some of the things that we can be looking at in terms of climate mitigation. Um, first question is, uh, why, why a budget is important? And you know, it sounds like a little academic altogether. But the, the, the carbon budget actually underpins the human perturbation of the climate system. I mean, as it stands now, 65% of the full radiative forcing uh, is coming from CO2 alone. The other thing is that the global carbon budget gives us this uh, very unique opportunity to have a global consistency check of all the quantities of both sources and sinks, which measure independently. So if, if things don't square up, uh, you know, it's an opportunity to realize that we're doing the wrong thing. And also, it starts giving us a little insights into where some of the potential leverage points for climate mitigation are. So let's start it. I mean, this is the bottom line while we're doing all these things. And the bottom line is atmospheric CO2 growth. Uh, we reached 383 uh, parts per million in 2007. That's about 37% increase over um, the pre-industrial times. And we're mostly interested as well in understanding how quickly this carbon is growing in, in the atmosphere, how, how quickly the amount that we're dumping into the atmosphere really stays and builds up, which is the final responsible for climate change. We've been growing about 1.5 parts per million per year for about 30 years until 2000. And from 2000, we jump almost quite abruptly, about 33%. We're about two parts per million growing very steady average since 2000 to 2007. The 2007 actually was just a little above average, 2.2 parts per million. So this is what we call, you know, the, the bottom line of why we are interested in all these things. This fits straight into uh, climate change. Now let's now look at the components. First one, we we'll call it the Goliath of carbon emissions, uh, is of course the emissions from the combustion of uh, fossil fuel and cement production. We reach 8.5 billion tons of carbon in 2007, and again, we're most interested in understanding the uh, the speed at which uh, we are accumulate uh, we are uh, emitting these emissions. And so, uh, the the speed at which we're emitting it's about 3.5 percent since 2000, and perhaps the most astonishing thing is the fact that we jump from about 0.9% during the 90s. Now the 90s, it was a very special decade, mostly because we saw the collapse of the old Soviet uh, Union, but the 2000s have been equally uh, unique in the sense that we've seen some recovery of that collapse, but most importantly we've seen China coming at a speed no one had anticipated. You put all these things together and in addition to until very recently having a really strong economic boom all across the board uh, globally, uh, we've seen what it is truly an astonishing jump from 0.9%, almost four time you know, increase in the growth of, of uh, emissions uh, from fossil fuel. Now, last year we published this figure where we said, well, these are all the, what you see in black, and uh, you see the actual emissions uh, that, um, that we've been measuring. And all these lines are what's called the IPCC series scenarios, which were the emission scenarios we developed late in the 90s as all plausible futures that we could have in terms of emissions. And the publication last year, it really said, well, we're seeing something happening here, is that you know, we, we, we really start kind of tracking the, the most intense uh, emission scenario, the one that is called A1FI, which is fossil fuel intensive, 
the one that when it was created, it was unthinkable that we could actually be tracking that. It was really a, an academic exercise that you really have to have a, a worst case scenario and a low case scenario. And of course, for almost a decade, we've been very happy to actually use B1, which is the middle ground uh, emission scenario, which we've used so many times for impact studies and even for you know, informing policy developments in climate change. What we've been able to actually do now uh, for this 2007, a review, uh, revisit of some of the data from the past and updating it to 2007, and here's what we, we are. Basically, we're just consistently and confirming that we are now tracking, well, actually not only tracking, we're slightly above the worst case scenario in terms of average emission growth um, for uh, the past almost 80 years now, since 2000. Just to put some numbers to it, these are averages, and I'm not here talking about the errors and the standard deviations, which would make a little the numbers more complicated, but it's worth looking at. For the 2000-2010 for the, the uh, period, the, the most intensive worst case scenario showed an, a, a a growth of 2.7% per year, we are at 3.5% per year. The other thing that has happened, which has been exceptional, is the, the, the completely change of, of relevance of who is putting emissions into, into the atmosphere. This is a figure that it's showing that in 1992, when we developed the convention, on climate change, the developed world, which is called here Annex B, and that's the language of the Kyoto Protocol, uh, was responsible for 62% of the emissions. And the less developing world, non Annex B, were responsible for 38. It took us about five years to actually uh, agree on, on, on a protocol and, and really you know, adopted it. At that point, the developed world had already reduced their share, the global share of emissions, to 57%. Well, it took us seven years to actually get this Kyoto Protocol into, into force.